Y'all be nice to each other. Hey, hey, y'all be nice. Boots, I know it's your fault. It can't be Sophie's fault. Sophie's sweet. Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Picker. My name is Kevin and we are in the eBay cave. The Commonwealth cabin is done. So that thing is just about ready to be moved into. I'm gonna put up some plates some places. I have to organize what it is I'm taking in there. I think I'm just gonna take in listed merchandise into there. And then the other stuff that's not listed, I think I'm gonna take one of the shelves in here and make this like an organized death pile. We'll be showing you that over the next few days, I'm sure, and weeks as we transition into there. And we'll still do shows back and forth, but we'll be in here probably for the remainder of the week, is my guess. And we might be pulling some items that we have put in there and bringing them back in here, I think is what we'll do. But uh, we did have some interesting sales today, and I wanted to ask you all a question, because we sold an item today, and we sold it not to a celebrity, not to somebody famous, but we sold it to a museum. And that's happened a few times. I've sent some items over the years to Hollywood, to different studios in Hollywood, and different people that are buyers for those studios. A couple of them told me that was the case, and a couple I had to kind of figure out, and a couple just made sense with the type of item that was going. I'm always curious to see when I watch old TV shows, or when I watch new TV shows that are supposed to be old, you know, from the 80s or 90s or 70s, maybe even earlier than that, old movies, and I look around and I look at those items and I'm like, I know how much that sold for, I know how much that sells for, and it's just something, I don't know, I probably shouldn't be paying attention to that when I'm watching a movie, but it's just something I do. I guess it's second nature from being a picker. So I want to know out there, I want you to leave me a message in the comments if you've ever sold anything to anybody famous, or if you've sold anything to a studio, or if you've sold anything to a museum. One thing I've sold to a museum since I started doing this show was a a book and it was a book about horses and it was an old old book and I think I paid five bucks for it and we made a pretty good little penny on it. So I'm going to show you a bunch of things that sold today. We had one viewer buy five different Inaman and I'm going to let you take a look at that in a little bit as well. And then another viewer sent us something really really nice and we'll go take a look at that at the Commonwealth Cabin at the end of the video and give them a thank you for that. But we did have some interesting things sell today including that museum item and we'll let you take a look at those right now. Let's take a look. Before we do that, let's knock out a couple of viewers. This is going to Kim, and this one's going to Richard. And both of you are really, really kind in your messages. And Richard just says he needs one for his eBay room, and he thanks us for all the great videos. So, Richard, we thank you. Appreciate it, and we hope he brings you great luck. All right, with all the people staying at home, they're pulling out the old mousetrap game, and they're realizing they're missing one of their mousetrap balls. So not only did we sell one set of mousetrap balls, but we sold two. By the way, I don't suggest people selling them. We sell them for $5.99 free shipping, so we're making next to nothing on them. But hey, have at it. This little Liberty University woman's shirt, and it's a size small, so that's a tough sell to begin with. But it is new with tags, and we got $12 for it. So a dollar into 12, really light. It'll stay under four ounces. So we'll, we'll still make a decent amount of money on this, like seven bucks. All right, these five are going out to Tim. And Tim, we thank you very much. And he says one's going to himself for his warehouse. One is to his sister, one's to his brother, and one is to his, what he says is his father figure. So Tim, thank you very much. And they're headed your way. All right, here is the item that's going to that little, I guess it's a museum. I'll read you the message here. And it's really, it's a restored place. And I'll let you see what the buyer says here. So it's a Northern and Western Rail Yard lock. And railway stuff sometimes is hard to sell because they won't let you sell it. But this is old. It's obsolete. Matter of fact, I probably put obsolete in the title. So if you're selling that old railroad stuff, uh, a lot of times you're going to need to put obsolete because this is clearly an obsolete lock. This is something I picked up in a private pick. It was a, a private pick I did at a student's house, a fellow faculty member at school, and I teach her daughter. And her mother had passed on not too long ago and they had already done a few sales and they invited me over to basically do a private pick and we were able to do that. I actually have two videos. It took a long time to go through that, that house and this was one of them. Her dad had found some old locks and stuff and I think he had thrown them away. He'd showed them to me and then he threw them away I think is what happened and I picked them up and said hey you know can we put this in the deal. These are some neat old locks. And this one is the one I really wanted. It stood out. I knew it would have some value. The other ones were kind of generic, but I know from experience they sell in the antique booth for two bucks, three bucks, four bucks. And so I grabbed all those, a couple of old keys, key rings that had a bunch of old keys on it. Not the skeleton key type. They're definitely not that old. I would have definitely picked those up. 
but just some old keys from say like the 1960s maybe late 1950s so nothing amazing but this one stood out it's got some rust on it that i didn't even bother cleaning i just thought it gave it a little character and this guy sold for 40 dollars plus shipping and let me read you the message that came with it this is not a viewer this is just somebody buying this for for their own purposes here hello if you come across guides or items that mention boyce Virginia, Shenandoah Valley Railroad, and Northern and Western Shenandoah Division, postal books, railway, post office artifacts, on and on and on. Please let me know. These are for the display at the restored N&W Depot in Boise. I don't know if it's Boise or Boise. I think it's Boise, Virginia. Best wishes, Frank. So that is awesome. And he leaves his uh, email address for me as well. And I have an entire, if you remember a garage sale we did a few weeks, maybe a month or so ago, where I picked up a bunch of railroad stuff. I haven't listed much of it, just a few things. So I'm going to go through that thing. I didn't even look through it, and I'm going to see what's in there. I'm going to see if anything matches anything he describes. I'm going to take some pictures, and I'm going to send it to that email address. And maybe I can make a bulk sale to this, I guess I'd call it a museum, this restored Northern and Western Railroad Museum, or uh, depot as he calls it. So... We'll give that a shot and see, and if we can do that, we can get them a lot better deal on bulk items than we could selling one-offs and paying all the fees. So we'll give that a shot. Railroad stuff, it definitely sells, even something like this. This wasn't even in great shape, but you find something like this. This is n and There's different railroad stuff, even the playing cards that I had up here that I don't know where. Here they are right here. Put them in there. Chessy, the Chesapeake. So... At any rate, something to look out for if you ever see those railroad things. It's definitely worth picking up. I hear somebody coming. Come on. What you got there, baby? All right, we can't show them this because it's, uh, see what it says here? Look, not for private use, so we're going to have to take this back. What do you think? All right, look at all these Enderman here. So, All right, Reagan, tell them what the process is for those Enderman. What do you do? So I write on, well, I sign the cards, and then... Um, do I sign the cards first? Yeah. So I sign all the cards? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then Did I Blue Ridge sign... Mama sign any of these? I don't think so. Oh, okay. And then I sign five, or like 15 or some, and then I stick the cards in, then the anime, and then I pull that little thing and stick it over. And then we're going to get Turner to sign just a couple of them mm -hmm. and stick them in there. So if you get a Turner one, you're extra special. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for your help. You're welcome. All right, tell them goodbye. Bye. I mean, that's a lot of work. Look at that. That ought to last, uh, I don't know, four days. All right, and this one is going to Nancy, and Nancy is going to pass this on to her elderly father, and she says a few things that I probably she probably doesn't want me to read, so I won't, but he, she says, I hope this brings good luck. So, Nancy, thank you so much. We do appreciate it, and uh, we will be sending this off to your dad, and we hope he enjoys it. All right, here is a Richard Petty Racing Superstars. Now, we bought a ton of these, and we've sold a bunch in the booth, but I decided to take the Richard Petty ones and sell them in the eBay store. So we're not making a bunch of money. We're making just over 3 bucks a pop when we sell these after fees and shipping and cost and, you know, cost of goods and all that. But we've sold a bunch, and you've seen me sell it over the last few months. But after this one goes out the door, we only have two more left. So Turner loves it because it's like the king in cars. Another one of our old faithfuls here, and the light always gets this one. It's a Pecos League baseball. It is essentially a minor league baseball. It's exact same make, um, same brand, everything, nothing different. But this is for the Carlsbad Bats. You can see that right there. And it is a defunct independent league that just, it just doesn't exist anymore. And so they sold off all their stuff in bulk that they had as the league folded. And when I saw that going on on eBay, so this is essentially an online arbitrage item. I bought these on eBay, which is not something I talk about. It's not something I do often. But we bought these things in bulk. We bought 10 dozen of these things, and we bought them fairly cheap. I don't remember the exact price, but I know that we make about $4 every time that we sell one, because I've got the little calculation on my sheet so I can put it in my spreadsheet. But we are down to seven of these. So that was a great buy. It's been a few years, but it's a great buy, and I wish I had 10 dozen more. All right, and this one's going out to Kyle, and he says, Big fan of both of your channels. Wanted to buy my good luck charm for my eBay room before they run out. Buckeye resale. Would love an autographed one. Happy the Shed is so close to completion. Quick question. How are you finding inventory, or is your death pile large enough 
to keep your listing for weeks. <laughs> at any rate, quote, any rate, it's at any rate, by the way. Thank you for keeping me entertained and educated for the last six months. Wishing you and your family good health and happiness, Kyle. First of all, I'll ignore your, uh, your kind-hearted ridicule. My wife does it too, so I'm used to it. At any rate, I will answer your question here, but I do have on the Commonwealth Flipper channel every Friday, I basically take the questions that I get on both channels and I film them really quick every time I see one and we turn it into a video and we answer a bunch of questions over there on the Commonwealth Flipper channel. So at any rate, see, I just did it again. Let me answer your question right now. I got to tell a story real quick. I'm a storyteller. You got to forgive me. So when I did my student teaching, I had an unbelievable teacher that was kind of guiding me through how to teach. I mean, he was a master. He inspired me to want to teach, but he did the same thing. My thing is at any rate, I say it all the time in my class. His thing was like I said. He must have said every every lecture he gave, and I don't do too many lectures, but every time he gave a lecture, every time he got up in front of class, he'd say, like I said, like I said, like I said. He said it all the time, and I would tease him about it. And then many, many years later, my students come to me and they're like, do you realize you say that all the time? And I'm like, yes, yes, I do. And apparently you do too. In answer to your question, my death pile is large enough that I should be able to list for quite a while. So I buy bulk buys sometimes of clothing. I have three giant bulk buys of clothing. One of, actually we have four because my wife has the Sunny Shares sale. I have Under Armour that I bought from Play It Again Rick. And I have that massive buy of off-road like dirt bike and biking attire that I haven't listed yet. I also have a big giant tub of things that my uncle gave me. So Uncle Dave, if you're out there listening, I still haven't gone through that, but I've just started to. So my clothing death pile is massive. And then my other death pile, which I'm going to work through sooner, I've already started working through it actually. I'm going to probably get through that. My goal is to get through that in the next probably two to three weeks. And then if we're still doing what we're doing, which it looks like we might be, then I'll start attacking that clothing. So that's fairly typical of me. I think this year because of YouTube, I have a bigger death pile at this time of year because YouTube takes up so much time. But that's a really good question. And I know a lot of people are out there are really struggling for merchandise and they're trying to find different ways to source it. So maybe I could send you a giant tub of clothing and you could, you could list that out there. So at any rate, Kyle, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Speaking of my death pile, I pulled this out of my death pile the other day. It's a Macintosh G3. I think they're called Power Books. And they have these chargers. And I can't remember the name of these chargers. So this didn't work. So I got it going. I cleaned it up. Actually, I always test my items before I clean them just in case. Because you don't want to clean something forever if it doesn't work. And when I plugged it up, it would try to start and shut down. Try to start and shut down. And there's probably a common fix for it. But I sure as heck don't know it. And I'm not going to fuss with it. Now, the problem is I couldn't figure out if this was the problem or if this was the problem. If I knew this was the problem, I would sell this as working and I could make a pretty penny on it. But I have a feeling that this might be part of the problem because as I was putting it in and moving it around, it would it's like shorting out. It would try to start it, stop, try to start it, stop. So I don't know which one's not working and I don't have the time or effort to fix it. I paid next to nothing for this guy. I think I paid a buck for this and this. If I remember the place I got it from. So we didn't pay very much into it. So I decided I was going to list this thing as is four parts. And it sold really, really quick. I just changed my screen up there. But I believe it was $39.95 plus shipping for this guy. And this sucker's heavy. But it'll either go in a flat rate or we're going to do pirate ship on it. Or maybe even a regional A box. This thing is solid. I don't know how much it weighs. But it's got to weigh like seven, eight pounds. I mean, this baby is heavy. And I've sold vintage computing stuff in the past. This isn't all that vintage. This is probably, what, late 90s is my guess? I don't know. You computer folks out there, let me know. But I sold stuff. I sold stuff in 2002 when I first started reselling. The second year, I think I started in 2001, second year 2002, I basically bought out a store of just old merchandise. It was used. It wasn't a computer store. It was a jewelry shop. But they had a ton of computer stuff, and they'd switched everything out. They had boxes and boxes floppy disks and old IBM computers and all kinds of stuff and I bought it all out and I sold it pretty quickly if I still had that stuff it'd be worth 10 times as much as it was back then back then it was obsolete now it's hard to find collector item type stuff so at any rate I love selling old stuff even if it is for parts you know this is pretty good paid a buck turned it into 40 plus shipping can't go wrong with that
If you want to go back and check out the other item that I sold to a museum, the title of the video was we sold this book through eBay to a museum for an exhibit. And I'll link it right here or right here. I get confused. And you can go check that out. At any rate, Kyle, thank you all for joining us today. We do appreciate it. As always, we enjoy you coming to join us. And hopefully in this time, maybe you're stuck at home, we can bring you some enjoyment. And you guys certainly have brought us a lot of joy. So we appreciate it. And don't forget to leave your comments. Give it a thumbs up. Do all those wonderful things. And we're going to go in the Commonwealth Cabin and look at a gift that somebody sent us that we talked about the other day on a video. And I really want to show you that. So let's go ahead and go in there and take a look. Hey, I just remembered I was here doing some shipping and I just remembered we put a video on the Commonwealth Flipper channel. That's an interview. It's kind of an addition to a video we did earlier with Patriot Picker. He's a new eBay reseller and we did an initial video and we did a follow-up video and asked him about some of the mistakes he made and some things he's going to try and improve on if he's a new eBay reseller. So if you're brand new to eBay in the last five or six months, I think it's a video you might enjoy. It's over on the Commonwealth Flipper channel. It should have come out this morning. I'm not quite sure. But go over there and check it out. All right, y'all, I just wanted to take a second. Somebody was kind enough to send something to the kids here, but we read this the other day on the show. I'm going to show you something, and I'm going to let you take a look at this. And this is from Melanie, and Melanie sent a message, and she is a reseller. She's a uh, reseller like most of us. You can read this one right here if you want to pause the video or read the whole thing. I'll let you get it on here. We're obviously not going to read the whole thing. This is an important website if you want to be generous here in the future. I, I marked off her phone number, but her email's right here. And she lost her husband, and her uh, children lost their father, who was trying to uh, save, actually did save, a young boy, if I remember the story, at the beach. And uh, I'm not going to get into the details of it, but if you want to watch that show from a few days back, you can go check that out. But they sent us five books that their daughter Madeline made. And these are the books, and the kids have been looking at them. This one was sent directly to the kids here, the homeschool hustlers. And they've already looked through it, and they've already been pulling out the little coloring books and all this stuff, you know, and they're homeschooled. So we're going to go through this little bit of curriculum, and then we're going to pass it on. Now, we go to the beach every year, and we go... Do you guys like the beach? Yeah. You yes. do, don't you? Reagan, I remember you just jumping in a pool one time. You didn't even know how to swim. Yeah. I had to jump in after you. Didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, it was a tiny little pool, but yeah. that was an interesting day. And we also live by the lake. Y'all like going to Smith Mountain Lake? Yes. At any rate, we are very grateful. And if there's anybody who'd like to help, um, or if anybody liked the, the book, this is an interesting book. There's the daughter right there who wrote it. And uh, it tells the whole story. It's a children's book. If you would like it, just uh, hit me up on Instagram or on my email. We'll ship it off to you. If you want to donate the shipping costs, that's fine. If not, that's fine too. I'll still ship it off to you. And there's obviously no charge. But this one's going to stay with the kids and they'll read it for some homeschooling. Huh? And we'll go through the, the little coloring books and whatnot too. But uh, there's an email if you want to contact her. And she's been very generous in this, and we do appreciate it. So we wanted to take a second to say thank you, and uh, we hope we can reach out and touch a few people's lives. Tell them thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
paper animal again? An otter. An otter. An otter. Coloring book about Josh the baby otter.